All right, welcome to our Sabbath school. We're uh this is February third, uh, two thousand twenty-four, covering our um Sabbath school lesson the quarterly. Uh, we're going through the Psalms. I hope you guys have been enjoying, um, you know the Psalms here. I think the Psalms is one of the best uh books of the Bible because <laughs> it really covers a lot of um practical stuff as well like proverbs we went through proverbs last year but the psalms this you know just covers more of like poetry you know and like more of like how your feelings are in regards to different situations and uh, and they're they're not sometimes you think that <clears throat> these things are just more emotional things but a lot of the psalms are expressing like real truths that we need uh to remember in our lives <clears throat> and so that's why Jesus himself said you know that we ought to you know remember the psalms the books of moses and and uh the prophets and so this um this lesson right here is uh basically going to be talking about suffering um and things of that nature regards to you know how <clears throat> how we deal with that and how the psalms kind of helps with that as well um in our struggles in life so let's go ahead and pray real quick, and then we'll we'll get started here. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for the Sabbath. Lord, I thank you that we can come and delve into your word. I pray that um, your word would change change us and give us new uh, depths of understanding, wisdom. Lord, uh, we know the Psalms... Lord, it has so much depth and it's talking about various subjects and um, struggles in people's lives. Lord, I pray that uh, we would gain uh, hope and and wisdom, Lord, we, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Seeing the, the Lord's song in a strange land. So the that, that was the 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 title verse of, of this court of this uh, week's lesson. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I think that's a good question. You know, a lot of us, uh, you know, are in, you know, we are in a world that is not our home. Right. You know, like we're all sojourners in a, yeah, like in in this in this in this world. And we know that Jesus is coming very soon, you know, to bring his kingdom, which we're all citizens of, you know, by faith, uh, being adopted children, you know, as spiritual Israelites and being adopted and grafted into um, God's, you know, lineage or, or God's like family. You know, we 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 are literally in you know, a, citi a citizen of a different land. You know, like I, I remember when Jesus was was asked, you know, like, are you a king? You know, it, you know, I remember when he was being uh, interrogated right before his crucifixion, like he was and he was basically saying my kingdom is not of this world. Right. Like and um, so he was saying that he was a king, but he was a king of a different different world. And the, and the same thing with us, like you were to say, are, you know, are you a citizen? You know, like yes, you are in a, in a, in one sense a citizen of the United States, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever country you are in this world, but in a, in a, in a more real sense, you're you're a citizen of heaven, citizen of citizen of the kingdom of God. But how you know now that we're you know we're still in this temporal earthly realm, you know, how do we sing the Lord's song in this in this land? You know, how do we how do we keep you know, singing, and what are we singing? What's the content of our song? Um, and this is what this is what this is going to be talking about uh, today. It says here, biblical faith often involves uncertainty and suspense, as much as confidence and affirmation. Sometimes the uncertainty and suspense, especially in the face of evil and the seeming absence of God, can be almost unbearable. However, uncertainty should never refer to God his loving and righteous character, or his faithfulness. The psalmist may have doubts about the future, but they often appeal to God's unwavering love and faithfulness. And so some of the questions that are addressed in, in the psalms are, 
Like, why does God allow suffering to exist and sin? Why does God allow the innocent to suffer? Why doesn't God put an end to our current suffering? Have his promises in scripture failed? And why do the wicked prosper? Why do the wicked, why do the wicked prosper? Uh, so th those are the topics we're going to, we're going to talk about. And these are all really important questions that I think that, you know, we ought to tackle and that we need to kind of um, really uh, delve into. So um, in Psalm 79, 10, it says, why should the nations say, where is their God? Before our eyes make known among the nations that you avenge the outpoured blood of your servants. When King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple and raised Jerusalem, um, God's people were totally confused. How long would God allow suffering, and how long will the victory of the um, how long will the victory of the wicked be? How long will the name of God be blasphemed, and how long will He not forgive sin? How long will He remain silent? You know, have you ever been to that? You know, got to that point in your life at all, or if you have you ever asked these questions? You know, how long will God allow suffering? How how long will that be? Yeah, you know, like there's a lot of people, you know, you know, for the things that happen in their life, they blame God all the time, you know. Yeah, it's true. You know, like, well, <laughs> you got, you know, it's it's not. I mean, the devil could be the reason, what part of the reason, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're not, we're not, we're not have it. We don't have our true faith, you know, because it it would give you the wisdom, you know. That's right. You have to understand too, you know. Yeah, patience, you know. Not, not that's not God's fault. You know. it's, that's right. You, hey, I'm glad I'm here. I don't care if I hit Amen. my thumb with a with a hammer. You know, it's, you know, some people they curse God. Why don't you curse the devil? <laughs> you know, they say God. That's that's so. You know, that's, that's a really good. That's a good yeah, point. Devil. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly right. The first thing they do when they say they got. They curse God. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, <laughs> right? Because when remember when the disciples asked, you know, about the wheat and the tares in the in the parable of the field, you know, it, yeah. Jesus said it was the enemy that has done this, you know, right? And the enemy, and then he later clarifies who that enemy is, and he says that enemy is Satan, you know, you know, and so like, so yeah, you're right. Like, why do we blame God instead of Satan for it? You know, and then the and then you got rumors, you know, that they they blame it. God's people, or the innocent, they lie. So the devil not only creates stuff like, but he then he lies about it to put the blame on God's people. You know, you know, you know. yeah, it is. It's, it's, it is a huge lie that he's making us try to believe that it's God's fault. And uh, but you want you want to give that to Albert? Sorry, you can just pass it along. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean, I, I totally agree with that. I think that um. You know, there is a big um, perspective matters, I think. And yeah. How you look at certain situations will really color um, what you think about God. Right. Um, you know, I mean, this is a hypothetical example, but let's say I go and I want to climb. I mean, this is an extreme example, but let's say I say I go and want to climb Mount Everest. Right. And I go to Mount Everest and I try to climb it and I die. Okay. <laughs> that's right 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 and then my family is like why did god let this happen to us right <laughs> it's like no <laughs> <laughs> right. you know like it's sad that i've died but right. the choice to do something like that was mine that's, right? that's exactly now right. obviously there are natural disasters and things that we cannot control and god god has looked at the situations of all those who are going to pass away and that's and and he has judged accordingly, right? Right. We don't know how many people who are wiped out by a natural disaster are going to be in heaven. Yeah. I don't know that. That's for God to judge. Right. But a lot of times when we're blaming God for certain things, if we distill it back, right, you understand that there was a series of choices potentially or decisions right. that led to that point mm -hmm. that maybe we should we could have listened to God earlier, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, and then some of these things may not happen. Right. And so 
um it's a matter of perspective exactly exactly and then, you know like and then i think you know it, it kind of goes to the whole idea of calvinism and stuff like that remember when they, when um when jesus was asked you know whose fault was it for that thing to fall <laughs> and then he and he and uh and jesus basically said well the rain falls on the just and the unjust you know it's just like you know some, sometimes it is just you know god does leave things you know um uh, to uh to just like yeah possibilities and just you know natural consequence you know like like it's not like god you know is going to intervene in every single second um and so some people think that like god is you know has to intervene in everything you know everything that every time there's a, a evil that happens you know, and I, I like what I think C.S. Lewis said. If God was to intervene every single time there's evil, like we would all disappear because <laughs> everybody would everybody sins maybe like once a day or whatever it may be, you know, and, and, and even if it's a small matter. And if God intervened in every little like every little thing, like and then he had to execute judgment on every single thing, like everybody would be every would everybody would disappear. So it's. I think that we have a wrong conception of God sometimes when we, you know, think that God has to intervene in every single second. Um, but yeah, so it says if God's people were destroyed, where was the honor of God's name? The only solution the psalm see the psalmist sees is for God to avenge His people and destroy their enemies, as He had done in the past. You know, and so this is this is going along that line of like our pre our preconceived notions of what God ought to do and what he and what he should do and and what his character is like you know I think a lot of times we we think that okay the way that God has dealt with, with things in the past is exactly how he's going to deal with things like right now you know he, he's going to avenge his enemies and whatnot maybe like you know the, you think of the story of Moses you know, and you think of like how he he came, he heard, he 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 remembered the covenants, he saw, and then he um, and then he he came and and saved them from the Pharaoh and the Egyptians, right? And you think like, but how long were they slaves though? Long time, right? <laughs> and and the, and the, and the same thing with the Amorites and whatnot. It took like I think four hundred years or so, a certain point. For the Amorites to get their, you know, cup full before he executed, uh, yeah. you know, judgment, he got his patient. And so, if you're in like those two hundred years, like, you, and you're living in two hundred years, you know, when the Amorites were were still like doing their thing, you would think like, where is God? You know, <laughs> where is God? But he came like two hundred years after that. So, and the same thing, like sometimes in our generation. There might be people that are crying out, you know, look at all the child trafficking and look at all the evil in, a, in, in in the world. And a lot of people are praying about what's happening in Gaza and, um, you know, and right now. But literally, that's like they, they've only been established, what, in 1947 or 1948. So it's only been, what, like 70 years, really. And yes, there's been a lot of killing and, and a lot of uh, things that are happening. And people are crying out, but that's 70 years worth. And look, look how the, the watching world is looking at what's going on. So, you know, a lot of people are learning about, you know, th these 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 intricacies and whatnot. So th there's a lot to, you know, there's a lot of factors involved is, is basically um, in regards to like what are preconceived notions of God, you know, what he ought to do. And I, I think that God is has his own prerogatives. God has his own um like you said, he has his own forbearance, his own forget, uh, ways of forgiving. And it might not be the way that we think it ought to happen. It, you know, it might not be as fast as we think it ought to happen. It might not be uh, as, you know, uh, avenging as as it ought to happen. But God, you know, God does that. God works in many times mysterious ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And so, like, we ought to you know, submit to that and, and surrender our preconceived notions about how God ought to act. <clears throat> um, aware that sin had brought them to this, this situation, he asked God to listen and remember his covenant, forgive sin, remove suffering, and act on the behalf of his people. 
So this is actually the language that I preached about last week. It went, went, went in uh, Exodus chapter 2 that God did see, you know, the suffering of the Israelites, you know, in Egypt. And that he was able to remember and see. And, and this, is, this is what the people in the future were, you know, were calling upon God to do. He say, you did that for, you know, the, the Israelites in Egypt. You, you know, you can do that today. And I think that there's merit in that, like, you know, calling God's attention to how he acted in the past. And, the, and, and then like, Lord, you know, do that for me, you know, today. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen just like it like it did in the past. You know, when you pray, you pray that, you know, if I didn't hear you, they say that at that time. Right. Yeah. He hears you. That's right. It could be a week, from a day, or two, or even a week, month. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. That's right. It's important. You know, we're like, his his life, you know, we're living for him. He, you know, we're, we, history is created. And, you know, God, because God is alive. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's exactly. Right. It's so true. Right? Amen. 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 Um, you have you gonna say something already? So, so why does God allow the innocent to suffer? That's another question that is um. That is mentioned in the Psalms as well. I am overwhelmed with trouble and my life draws near to death. Psalms 88 uh, verse 3. And uh, if, if you go there in the context there. Psalms 88 3. He says oh, in verse 1. Oh Lord God of, God of my salvation. I have cried out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to the grave. I am counted with those who go down to the pit. I am like a man who has no strength adrift among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, and who are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit in darkness in the depths. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with all your waves. So, <laughs> so this is a, a man that's full of despondency. And full of like, um, you know, woe is me type of mentality, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, poor on me, like I, I like the, uh, all the, <laughs> like, it, and he's crying out. And I'm sure it says his soul is full of trouble. So I, th 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 there's no doubt that he, this person has, you know, troubles that, you know, that are probably overwhelming for him. Well, look what happened to Joe. Exactly. That's a good example. He's still so steadfast. You know, he's still held out to the belief. This what did his wife say? Curse God and, <laughs> and die. <laughs> yeah, die. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Your reward is going up to that. What you can do. That's right, and that just, just and that, and Job did like Job did hold out, and he did get. Uh, well, like you have a lot of people, you know, who they, they came there to work for like thirty years and get a pension, or mm -hmm. you know, they they float around, you know, they persevere. They be strong and have a you know spiritual goal. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to wait, you know, and it, it's hard to see uh, like things happen around you and 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 destruction and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Go to church. I think so. I think so. This is one of the hardest, you know, things to answer to people, though. You know, like I was just uh, in a group chat. They say the, the best thing to do, you know, to help suffering. I mean, if you can help them directly through like healing them, you know, helping them as a doctor or nurse or whatever, counseling. But the best thing to do is just be present with with people, 
you know, just being actually with with people during their during their troubles, you know, turmoil because you can't necessarily do things like uh, we just had somebody pass away. You know, she had pancreatic cancer. There was like nothing you can do. Like no 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 modern science could really help with this. And so like all, all you got to do is just be with them, you know, all the way into the end. Give them hope encourage seeing with them and just you know give them hope about their self the assurance they have in, in their salvation attending yeah exactly um but it, they, they say you know apologists and people that uh you know get in debates with you know the, they they say this this question is de definitely difficult you know like if if you lived during the holocaust like and you saw people dying like you know just uh this that sort of evil like you know, it's hard to say, you know, like, like, where is God during this time, you know? Or exactly like that. And, and you just see like this, this like. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot to go, to go with this, you know, um, but I, I think the, the obvious response, you know, one of, one of the obvious responses is, is, is free, is the free will defense, you know, like God, God does allow free will to reign, you know, he lets people make choices. And, and like I said earlier, he can't like keep stopping every single little you know everyone's decision like if, if, if for the wrong because if that was the case then nobody would able to, like the watching world and everyone else wouldn't be wouldn't be able to see like what the 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 consequences of all these things yeah there, there's some merit in that yeah learning on your own you know making sure that you are um yeah you're exactly yeah like like exactly like that's that's a, that's a big one practice makes perfect uh you got you know no pain no gain kind of thing you know in in some in some in some areas of life that that's the way muscles grow that's the way faith grows you know if you if there is no like sort of uh turmoil or any sort of animosity anything like that how can your your faith grow you know like you sometimes doing it before you. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> You just follow in the crowd. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> it says here, the person who loves God and wants to serve him could be expected to be free from evil, protected by God, but the reality is that the righteous also suffer like others. The psalmist sick awaits death and does not understand why God does not respond. He even accuses God of being the cause of his illness and pain, like we we're talking about. There is no mention in Psalms 88 of the sins that could have caused the, his illness. In reality, his suffering, as often happens with our suffering, did not derive from any sin of his own. The reality makes suffering something difficult to understand, inexplic inex inexplicable. There is only one solution. Cry out to him who controls everything and wait for him to act in due time. Yeah, I like that. Go ahead. Yeah, I think um, this is a, obviously a very difficult, difficult question. Yeah. But I was just thinking about it right now in the context of kind of the greater controversy. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Job was brought up. Right. And... Mm, while you never want to minimize the suffering, because I mean it is suffering, right? Um, in some ways, if you look at it in that light, um, I think the way that Satan looks at it is that it is only fair that there is suffering. Mm. In the sense of like, if there was no suffering, more people would, you know, like it would, it would be like uh, suffering in a lot of ways is Satan's Satan's weapon, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. To try to and make pain. people reject God. Mm. And that was played out with Job. Remember what Satan said? Yeah. He said, hey, 
Yeah, things are going good for Job, and that's why he believes in you. But you remove the hedge. You like, remove that, and you uh, punish him and make him suffer, then he will reject you. He will reject you. And, and that is a real-time application of the great controversy in the sense of, hey, if, you know, take those things away and make him suffer, then he will reject you. Mm. And it, it essentially choose safety, right? And so... Um, when I look at it, it's, well, why does God allow the innocent to suffer? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because God's not the only player out there. There is God and there is Satan. That's right. And there, there's free will and there is this conflict. Right. Where, um, uh, you know, like in front of the whole universe, it needs to be fair. Mm -hmm. I agree. That would only allow you that's right that's true that's true well that's true. i i guess i kind of agree with that but i think the the verse that's used for that is talking about temptation just because mm -hmm. i've heard people quote like first corinthians 10 13 threat you know uh, there's no temptation taking you but such as kind of god will not Allow, yeah. allow you to be tempted with it. About. But it doesn't it, it does talk about suffering, right? So mm. I think there are times where there is suffering and things that are beyond what we can handle. Mm. That's when we need to go to God. And that and, and then God will help us to be able to right. You know, God can fill that void. I agree. Um there's definitely no temptation though. Right. That is more than we can handle. Right. That's absolutely true. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, exactly. I, I think like sometimes, you know, as a believer, we know that um death isn't the last, I mean, uh this world isn't the last, you know, final say. And even if you die, that's not like the that's not the end of it, of the game either. That's not the end of, of, of it all. Because we know that there is a judgment and that there's eternal life, you know, after that. So in, in a way you know, like, I think that if you're in extreme pain, God can end it, you know? And, and then the, ne and the next thing that you think of is, like, you know, of Jesus' is coming, his, his appearing, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's like oh, you know, it, it's like the next, the next conscious moment that you have is actually, you know, waking up and, and, and your, your, your body is transformed and you're glorified, you know? And so that they're, they're in a way, like, you know, some people say it's like it like to 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 die is actually not, you know, is not the end. You know, you know, I always wonder too. Like, you know, I right. always, I always wonder. You know how, how you know what kind of a disastrous accident would take your life. You know, because I've been involved in a lot of bad things. You know, like right. accidents. And what 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 is it? Is it your head, your body, your soul? And, That's you know, right. Like you see a stars and. You know, so I've fallen one time and hit my head. You know, I saw a star. Exactly. <laughs> and I said, exactly. Am I going to be brain damaged now? You know. Or... Right. Right. <laughs> but what actually? How does God? You know, takes your life. You know, takes the soul from you. You know. That's I think exactly we have it. a soul. I think we do have a a soul. That's what. You know. I yeah. mean, we get we, we our body could be damaged. It could be healed, repaired. You know, and right. the doctors could you know fix you up. But, right. But they can't fix your soul. <laughs> it's exactly. also your time's up. Yeah. You know? That's right. That's right. That's the the barrier. You know, that both sides. You know, where does it end? You know. Huh? That's right. That That's life right. is it's a mysterious thing. You know, it's 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 a beautiful thing. It's amazing. You know. It really is. It really is. And um, yeah. There's a there's a lot that can be said about this uh this topic. Yeah. Um, but the Psalms is definitely you know I I love that the Bible doesn't um shy away from these difficult issues you know that that doesn't shy away from uh these very pressing issues that are that are very existential you know things that that exist in our world today all the suffering and whatnot and and the psalms like really brings that out you know <laughs> like like how you know people are suffering in such a a harsh way and whatnot and, and the bible just highlights those things you know and it, it doesn't shy away from it it tries to like deal with it you know head on every you know aspect of our life really it's like it's like you know 
a circle, everything stems from it's it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Like, That's all. You know, exactly. You know, it's amazing. You know how it is amazing. You know, God, you know, puts that in words. You know about Amen. You know, being wise and. That's right. It's amazing. He he knows everything. Isn't that awesome? He, who who could write something like that? <laughs> the the basic this is why they call it the basic instructions before who, leaving Earth. Who could who could you know create his his history? He could just make that up. No. Out of the blue, you know. Yeah. That's why. It, that's why these people were real back then. Right. They were live. So how, how would how do we not take that serious? Exactly. Now? That's, I tell people, you know, that's right. That's right. It's amazing. You know, the end is it's not, it's not over. It's yeah. happening. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I was telling that to my students too. Like, if you're a human being, like, <laughs> then you, then reading the Bible is where you need to be because it talks about human being type of uh, you know actions and recourses and all all sorts of right. motions, past history. past history. Like we're in the current events now, but I mean then there, you know, I mean. If, you know, with God, you know, everything is like when we're, you know, he started, the you know, when the life started, it was dark, and then it starts in the dark, and then it goes in the light. Right. And at first, he's, he he started, when he died, it was dead, then he, he came to life. Amen. So then, it, when he came first, a long time ago, when he came, you know. Right. And then, he's got to finish that. Exactly. It's, it's, it's got to be an end. Yeah, he's, he's, that, gotta, he's the alpha and the omega, all right? The, so the author and finisher. Patient. You know, he's allowing us. That's one good thing about him. He allows us to all, you know, to take to do it. You know, that's right. That's right. And that, that that's what the whole great controversy Albert was talking about. You know, talks about, <clears throat> and our our understanding of it is like all the way from the beginning, all the way into the end. What well, we're gonna see that God is love. You know, right? I mean, you know, if it wasn't the beginning, how long it was? Two thousand years, or I mean, so we got a long way to go still. We do. Okay. We do. <laughs> so you never know, but you gotta you have to be ready because you know he says in the twinkling of an eye, you know, mm -hmm. be ready, you know. Yeah. You know, we don't you don't know. You know Amen. Amen. Things start happening like a lot of people are living in the dark, like they're in the, like in their mind or in their basement. You know, they don't they don't know what's happening. Fathom, they just can't, you know, yeah. fathom what the religious people are what's going on with God. Right. You know, so how do they know? <laughs> you know, like that's why we have to go. We have to be God's witness and alert them. You know, that's right. And maybe this this rev this uh revolution right now. You know, this uh resurrection. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Revival. 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 Reformation. There's, there's yeah. gonna be a revival. That's true. You know, and, and it's happening. It is. It it's is. To happen, you know, so people would wake up. That's right. This uh latter rain type yeah. things are going on. Um. Amen, amen. That's really good. Why does God not end our current suffering? Psalm 69.3, I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. To what extent does the psalm, psalmist feel the distance from God? <clears throat> he says, it is like a deer that can't find water. He is distressed, hurt without the will to live. He seems to live like like live in a desert, like the pelican, the owl, or the solitary bird. He feels sunk in the mire, unable to stand without help from God. He does not remain silent. He persists in prayer. Or how? Sorry. How do you respond then in this apparent absence? He does not remain silent. He persists in prayer. He examines himself. He declares his love for God, and he is sure that God will not remain silent forever. I think that's a, a really uh, important point. These are really important points. You know, the the extreme lengths of our emotions, you know, are very far. Like we can we can feel have a high tolerance for pain, right? And we can have a high tolerance for um, you know loneliness, for distress, for for stress. Um, and what do we do in the, in those times? You know, what do we do in those times? You know, like I said earlier, we cry out to the Lord. We cry out to the Lord. We remain steadfast in prayer. You know, we examine, you know, ourselves. You know, we declare, you know, God's love to those around us still. Just like Job. I, I think Job is a very good example. He is sure that God that will not remain silent forever. You know, God will, you know, eventually 
avenge his people. You know, like God will, like it says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, you know. Like God will will make all things right. You know, even if it's not here in this world, he is going to restore this world when he comes again, it says in Revelation, right? There'll be a new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven where there will be no more pain and no more crying, no more sorrow, you know, no more death. For all the former things, it says there, will pass away. Behold, all things, you know, will become new. You know, I think like sometimes I, I, we get into the mode that God is going to fix things now, right? <laughs> like God is going to make things, you know, right now. And and I think we should do everything in our in our power to to try to, you know, make justice and yeah, we could only do what we could do, you know. On that's Earth. right. On, on we don't world. have the super. <laughs> So, yeah, we don't. We're not superhero power exactly. Yeah, that. that's we right. To do that, we we take it. We we we'll take it God's you know, place. Put him to shame, kind of. You know, but I mean, we try. You know, but he's a, he's superhuman. Yeah, so we got to depend on him. That's right. I think that's why we pray, though. It helps. That's right. Meditate and pray and and, and practice too. You know? Right, right. Could only go so so much to do so much earthly. You know, with our physic physicality. You know, right. Our body. That's right. That's right. Like we we ought to do as much as we can in this world. I mean, that's what true religion is all about. I think helping others, you know, and helping others, making this world a, a better, better place. Thing. That's all you could do. What yeah, you do, really, you know. But sadly, it says in the last days, right, that the love of many will wax cold, yeah. you know, and that oh, yeah. and that people will end up doing all these, you know, yeah, things uh, disobedient and and all the, you know, it says that in uh, First Timothy, you know, I think that um. You know, we we this is like I love that. Well, what you said, what what do we do at this point? We we declare God's love to those around us. We declare God's love, uh, for God. Uh, says He declares His love for God. You know, you we we're in steadfast prayer. Uh, that means like praying continually. And that doesn't mean that you have to do the formality of prayer, like folding your hands, but like constantly be in the presence of God in your mind, and meditation and whatnot. And continue just in your daily life. Silent praying, you know. Silent prayer. God, God understands, you know. He understands God exactly. Pray. I love it. I love that. He is sure that God will not remain silent forever. And we know that God is going to come through those clouds. You know, he's going to come and um it's going to be loud and triumphant when <laughs> when Jesus comes back. I love I love it. He's gonna come with this uh sickle and, and like and, and really come and be the lion, not the lamb, you know? Right. He's going to be the lion uh, of Judah, and he's going to come and, and really uh, redeem his people. And I think that that's, um, that's, that's something that is like rock solid. It's an assurance that we have, uh, if, even in our current suffering. Right, you know, because his, his resurrection, that was the number one proof. That proof, that's exactly right. He uh, ascended uh, to heaven, you know, and, and we shall uh, also. You know, uh, I mean, he conquered if he, death. If he does it, you know, if it was your your family, your brother, your sister, and they told you something, you know, they went somewhere, they they go. You know, he says that he he's going to prepare a mansion. I said he would not have told you so. That's right. That's right. You know, and he would. He's not a guy that lies. <laughs> Amen. He, he he isn't. He isn't. Uh, the Psalms demonstrate that communication with God must continue regardless of life life circumstances. Like are are you are you still communicating, you know, with God during those times? Like uh, sometimes we can just dwell on our pain and all the, the our circumstances, but we need to direct it like to God. And I, I'm glad that we have somebody that we can talk to in those situations, right? What you know who, who like like what what other hope you know does other people have who do you talk to you just talk to yourself the president they, they got enough problems yeah yeah they have their own, they're not going to listen to you right they're just going to pet you on the head right we'll get around we'll get around to you we'll get around to it we'll yeah we got it that's right <laughs> Yeah, people people are gonna bound to fail too, right? Like we mentioned last week, we're human. We're, we're we err because we're humans. Yeah, counselors are gonna fail, friends are are, are gonna fail, but and they they might not even understand you properly. But God, like He listens, He understands. You know, what you're saying, you know, like we we are not we are not humans living in a spiritual age. You know, we are we are spiritual beings living in a 
material, you know, physical world body. Body. That's what, you know. That's what that's what a lot of people they could reverse that, you know. That's true. And see that they could be happier. That's but a good point. You're already a spiritual being. You know, he, like Jesus overcame the world, right? Amen, amen. So that's what he wants us to do, Father. You know? That's right. And he, I'm sure he's going to, those that, we, you know, fail, he's going to come, as long as you, 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 you stand strong, you know, head fast, you know. Right. He's going to, you're going to be saved. Amen, amen. Remain steadfast. Yeah. That's right. Steadfast. Have their promises failed in the scriptures? Hey, Anna. Oh, yeah, come, come, come. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> come in, come in, come in. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> we're the, we're the English ministry of the of the Korean church here. Yeah. So. No, I have to go to English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're. Uh, it's nice to meet you. My name's Larry. That's Emmanuel, and that's Albert back there. Hello. <laughs> Camilla. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, like roll. Okay. Oh, you said Amelia? Camilla, 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 Camilla. And what was your name again? Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Cool. Very cool, very cool. So are you guys from the area here? No. What happens is I know Hannah. Yeah. She's from the mom. It's her She was Yeah. Okay. You're employing? Oh, very cool. So we managed to be reconnected immediately. That's so cool. That's so cool. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to our, our small church here. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going through our uh, quarterly lesson. It's a, a, and uh, they have PowerPoints on there. So you don't have to, you can kind of follow along there. So uh, th th these are some of the questions that uh, we're, we're going through. It's just basically... We're going through the Psalms. I don't know if you've ever read through the Psalms in, in the Bible. The Psalms is very awesome. It, it just talks a, a lot about like um, just existential feelings that we have in our lives. You know, feelings of, of depression, feelings of, of doubt, you know, feelings of anger sometimes and frustration. And like, where is God, you know, uh, where uh, during suffering and pain and, and misery and things of that nature. And so that's what we've been talking about uh, today. Uh, and this question right here, have their promises failed in the scriptures? Uh, has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? It says in Psalms 77, 8. So we're talking sometimes uh, people, it's kind of hot. Let me open the window real quick. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's burning in here. Sorry about that. But let me open another window here. <clears throat> There you go. Um, so yeah, sometimes we wonder, like, you know, in, in, in this life when we're going through uh, different turmoil and different things that situations in our life, like, where is God and like, like, how long is he going to wait for to intervene in certain circumstances in life? And have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like that? Because the Psalms <clears throat> does not shy away from our very real emotions we have. The Psalms really like brings it out. Like, where are you, Lord? You know, like how how long am I going to have to feel this way, you know, in this world? And he says he cries out to God, hoping for an answer, but he does not find it. In his desperation, he refuses consolation. He remembers the moments when he sang to God and meditated on him. And he says, now, has God forgotten me? Where are your promises? Mm -hmm. You know, have you ever felt that way? You know, like God promises many, many beautiful things in his word. And he always fulfills them. Like he fulfills them like to a T. Um, and then like you said, Emmanuel, ultimately you see it uh, at, at the cross, right? We see it at the cross uh, on Calvary where Jesus died for every single human being in this world. You know, he died for us to show us, you know, who he really is, but he doesn't remain dead. He actually rises on the third day and is resurrected and he defeats death, you know, to show that he has power over even and death itself. 
And so like he promises that, you know, for God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, that is a promise that we can take to the bank. That's a promise that, you know, is for eternity. You know, that we can have eternal life, you know, in just the belief in what Jesus did on the cross. You know, but at times, you know, that, that feels as if that's not enough because we're living in a world where there's like a lot of pain still, you know. We live in a world that there's still a lot of deceit and a lot of um, maltreatment. You know, there's a lot of maladies in this world. And so how, you know, how can we live? Like how, how you know, how do we answer this question? Like, has God forgotten me in this world? What, what, what do you guys think? So this is Sabbath school. This is not the sermon. So in our Sabbath school, we have like a back and forth, like a dialogue. So if you want to say something, please, you know, if you want to contribute, you know, say you can say something like, how, how do we deal with this? This like, has God forgotten me kind of mentality? Go, go ahead. Yeah, I think that. Um, the, I, I think we need to have a good understanding of what the promises actually are in the scriptures. Mm. I think there's a lot of noise here, you know here and there about what God actually promises us mm. and, and what we should expect from God. That's good. And good I point. think that, you know, what you brought up in John 3, 16 is very relevant in that God did not promise, doesn't promise like prosperity, right? Or he doesn't promise like, you know, everything to be smooth. Jesus himself says the road is narrow, you know, right. that, that, that you're, that you're to go through. And so, the question really is, okay, which promises of God, what has he promised us, and is He and, and will he fulfill those promises? Mm. And the ultimate promise is eternal life. Right? Amen. But then the other, there are other promises in the Bible, and I think there sometimes is a misunderstanding of what those promises are, or what God is actually um, expected to fulfill. Um, because he doesn't promise the easy life, mm. you know? So... So when we say, well, is God listening to me, you know, answering my prayer? Yeah, one of his promises is to answer prayers, but it doesn't say he's going to answer yes, right? Right, or answer <laughs> in a way so, that you want it to. Or, yeah. or answer in a way that you yeah. want him to. And so um, I think there needs to be some, you know, like we need to we need to understand what, what exactly God is promising us mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then what that means for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It, go, it goes into our expectations of God may not be correct. You know, like our perception of like what God ought to do and what he should do is is sometimes um, incorrect, I, I would say. And um, I think that, you know, the more that we understand God's character, the more that we are in relationship with God, we understand like God's, you know, a person. You know, God is not just some like figure in, in the sky, some, you know, a figment of your imagination kind of thing. Right. But he's actually a person like and a person, just like a person that you are in relationship with on this earth. You know, they have like, you know, characteristics, you know, as you get to know, you know, your spouse or your children or your parents, your friends, you get to know about like their character, like, oh, man, this person is like really patient. Or this person is really like strong during circumstances. This person, you know, is very resourceful. This person is very, you know, um, wise, you know. And as you get to know God more and more, you know, he's not just like a very, um, you know, cut out figure of what you think God ought to be. He's a person that has personality, that has characteristics. He, ha he has characteristics like forbearance. He has characteristics like um, uh, like joy, you know, and all the fruits of the spirit, like kindness, goodness, you know, faith, hope and, and love. All these all these characteristics are uh, that are characteristics that we need to learn, you know, as we get to know God. And, and when we go through these situations in life, when we go through our despondency, when we go through failure, you know, broken relationships and failures, maybe on tests or whatever. And you're like, oh, Lord, where, you know, woe is me kind of mentality. We need to, we need to be able to trust God's character. 
Like we need to be able to trust that God is good. You know, that God is love, that God is kind. You know, he is patient. You know, and because of that, you know, we can bank on on that trust in that relationship to, to bring us through those trials in life. And I, I think that this is such a good point that you made, you know, Albert, that, you know, this is, you know, this is a relationship that we have with God, you know? And so, you know, I, I hope that, you know, as you, like it says at the very end here, whether openly revealed or hidden, God acts and let us, you know, trust in him. You know, how is trust built? How is trust built? You know, um, even in this, in our world today, in our horizontal relationships, like how is trust built? Go ahead. I think um, so a lot of things in my life. Mm -hmm. I was like teach you or teach you about okay, you got this time, you know, that's it. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> that's right. That's what it is on what's um, boring and what's the way. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Um, for me to trust is to have the faith mm -hmm. of there and be holding. Amen. Amen. That's right. And don't feel that that I'm in it. He is holding. Amen. That's right. It's true. I, I suffer through it. I go through it. I get anxious about it. Right. But I know there's something out there that's holding me. Amen. Amen. That's that's exactly right. You know, like it, and and that is uh, something that grows, right? Like so, it, it's something that has to continue to uh, develop. You know, like in any relationship, there has to be communication. There has to be a, a level of vulnerability. You know, there's there's um, there's just just basic communication. And I think in in our prayer lives and just our meditation, like we were talking about earlier, it says pray continually. You know, that is the will of God, and be you know give thanks to the Lord always. Like I think that you know if we're you know not developing a trusting, genuine, you know, vulnerable relationship with God and like just, you know, releasing the cries of our hearts, you know, the grief, the grief, the mourning, you know, the the the, the confusion, you know, the depression that you might have in, in life or whatever, you know, like, and we're not really like communicating with God, it, it, like we're just keeping it, everything in. We're just keeping it like it's, it's not going anywhere. Like, and we need to be able to talk, talk to other people, but talk to God and build relationship with him. And then that is where, that's how trust is built. And so when there are failures in life, when there are crushing moments in life where you feel so like alone and you feel like, you, you know, it's just so overwhelming, you know, you realize that I've built a relationship with the almighty God. You know, I built a relationship with the God that cares, that loves, that is transcendent, you know, above all the, the problems in this world. And I'm just going to keep holding on, like you're saying, like, he's my rock. I'm going to keep standing. You know, I'm not I'm not going to waver. I'm not going to fall down to the, the to the things in this life. I'm going to keep holding on. I'm going to keep standing, you know, and just go day by day. Take it day by day because you don't you know, you know that things are going to change because you're going to, you're, you're still trusting in him. So has his failures, you know, has God's promises failed in scriptures? It never has. It, it, and it never will. Isn't that beautiful? Go ahead, it's like, Emmanuel. It's like when you uh, go to go to sleep, you know, you trust you're going to wake up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's you right. Wake up, you know, and, but then, you know, there are earthly things too. You can't trust, put your trust in it. Yeah. Man all the time because, you know, take the example. Remember when the uh, that uh, money, the Bitcoin thing with the people putting their money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you put your money in a bank. You trust that it's gonna be there for you, whatever you need it. You know, right. some people they they were wiped out because they didn't put their, you know, trust. 
Or they, yeah. They're trusting the wrong thing. And they put the trust in the wrong thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I love the Psalms. The, the, the Psalms just talks about many, many uh, very interesting questions that we have subconsciously or maybe we have encountered these questions. But the next question that the Psalms talk about is like, why do then the wicked prosper when like the innocent and the and the good people seem to, you know, to fail and whatnot? It says in Psalms 73, 3, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Have you ever got to that? Have you ever got to that point? How you feel is that, man, how why, it seems so unfair that like sometimes the people that don't seem like they should you know, be promoted or those people that should, you know, are rich or whatever, they got there the wrong way. And here I am, you know, doing, trying to do it the right way, you know, going through school or, you know, working hard at the factory or whatever. And I'm trying to build, you know, my savings and doing everything right where people kind of just leapfrog me by, by doing like things that are, that are not right, you know, seemingly right. So like, have, have, have you ever got, have you ever got to that point? Have you ever have you ever felt that that there's a lot of people that are arrogant? It says, you know, stubborn, arrogant, obstinacy. You know, the people that are, you know, in this world. You know, like people that are just very like sometimes cutthroat. They say in in academia and stuff like that. People that would like actually try to cut you out, cut you off by by trying to climb up the ladder. You know, in this life. It seems like sometimes it it works for them, it, it works for them, and you say that's that's so unfair, you know, you know for for that for your you know they were maybe seemingly your friends at one point, and then and now because they want this promotion, they they kicked you to the wayside by by saying something or doing something, and um and then now all of a sudden they're, you know, uh, making more and have better positions or whatever. Like does that does that does that bother you? You know, does that bother you? <laughs> and and we, we know that this is the case with uh, a lot of the way our meritocracy works in in our in, our, in, um, in America, right? Some people that are that have that are in better circles than others, right? Like people that are in fraternities and people that are in um, you know, these um, different orders and stuff like that. They have like access to, you know you know, other people that can get them, you know, into a better position and whatnot. If you're part of, uh, of, of a fraternity, you know, that and the, and the CEO, the CEO was part of that fraternity or whatever, like that, they'll say, Hey, Oh, you're alpha omega, whatever. <laughs> and then you're like, Hey, you, you're higher. You know, you, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna get hired in. Um, yeah, there's like perks, right. And it, it, it doesn't seem fair like um and the bible again does not shy away from those types of issues because it, it happens uh more often than not it seems like it says the theory is what innocent person has been lost and where have the righteous been destroyed as i have seen those who plow iniquity and sow evil reap it at times hey jennifer however the reality is different many wicked people prosper and do not suffer although they have God removed from their lives. But those who seek to serve God many times suffer and suffer. Let's be realistic. In this world, the law is weakened and judgment does not come out according to the truth because the wicked besieges the righteous and therefore justice goes astray. This almost caused Asaph's feet to slip in Psalm 73 too. But when God led his steps to the sanctuary, he finally understood their end. And I, I like that. If you guys turn to Psalm 73, 17, Psalm 73, 17, if you have your Bibles on your with you or, or on your phone, you, you want to read that for me? Till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood the final destiny. Yeah, that's the one. That, that, that's right. You know, in, in this whole psalm, um, David is 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 having this mindset and he sees like all the prosperity of the wicked it seems like and he sees all the 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 evils going on and 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 not being they're being unchecked you know they're having they're having like their way and then he goes into the sanctuary of God 
and he sees their end. Like he sees their end. And this is what we've been talking about, that there is a finality to life. You know, there is an ultimate reckoning. There is an ultimate justice that happens at the very end. That there is, there is there's still eternal life that is to be rewarded. You know, and, and you know, this is, you know, this is the reality of life. The reality, the reality of life is people are building their castles in this world. They're building castles that eventually will burn. You know? <laughs> they're eventually going to be, uh, you know, you know, they're going to eventually be the um, decimator, right? When Jesus comes, all things are going to be restored and all things are going to be renewed. Like I said, there's going to be no more pain, no more suffering, no more crying, no more death. It says in Revelation 21, it says all things will, will have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You know, like if like, let, let's not be mistaken. Like, if we think that this world is is the end, yeah, it, it's very unfair because, you know, sometimes the wicked seem to prosper. But if we understand that there's actually eternity <laughs> that awaits, you know, and that there is actually more to this to the to this life than just what we see in this world, then then really this is you know there's more there, like there's more to what we see. Like is what I'm saying. There's more to what the what the Bible is saying, that there's something beyond, you know, this life, and those wicked people are not gonna inherit. It says the wicked will not inherit eternal life. So, so who wins at the very end? You know, who wins? Amen. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, Albert. I, I think it's a multifactorial sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, but perspective, I think, is important. And, and yeah, yeah. Um, the the question is like in terms of prosperity. Yeah, yeah. Um, does will because I think the way that God looks at us mm -hmm. is that He looks at us as a soul to be one for the kingdom right right like that's his ultimate desire for us is to spend eternity with him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if you're in line let's say for a promotion or prosperity the question is going to be whether that prosperity will actually make you closer to him or further away mm -hmm, that's right good, that's a good point. so you don't know if that promotion will actually bring you closer to jesus or not and from god's perspective if he's trying to protect you right or trying to, or wants eternity for you and he sees something that potentially would take you further away from him mm. then what kind of decision would he potentially make that's on the one hand the other hand is for the wicked mm. let's say mm -hmm. who are going for that promotion by nefarious means right right okay? um the the other question is satan is out there and will satan want somebody who's wicked to be able to get promoted so they so that they get further away from God? The answer is yes. yes, yes. So you've got this kind of constant sort of tension mm. where prosperity itself could be potentially used for good right. or not for good. And then you've got two sides where one side is looking out to try to preserve your eternity. Mm. And then the other side is trying to ultimately to lead to it. So, so, so when you don't get that promotion, it's possible. I'm not saying it's always the case, right. okay? But it's possible that um, that is something that may work out as a positive for you in the long run, not only for, you know, your current situation, but right. like what you're talking about, the ultimate sort of end. And right, yeah, that's a good point. Kind of like the blessing in disguise type of uh, mentality. Like there's a lot of people that didn't get that promotion or failed in their entrepreneur goals or whatever it might have been, or their their tradi their traditional job, and it forced them to find a different creative path. And all of a sudden, like they're more you know successful in that path. So like, yeah, like in God's like in God's higher um higher order of looking at things, like He knows the factors that will make you the closest to Him. You know. 
and what will bring the most success for for you. And so I think we need to really bank on that um, on that notion and on God's character that God knows best for us. You know, for those that may be struggling today, you know that that they see you know the wicked prosper and they see wickedness kind of uh, you know keep going on. You know, there's hope in God's in, in God's word. Like it says here, when he went into the sanctuary, he understood their end. You know, there's there's something about opening up God's word, you know, coming to church and understanding spiritual things that opens up your horizons. You know, it opens up like the, the uh, a bigger, like aerial, aerial view of what's going on. So like when, when things are not happening, you know, when, when people seem to prosper that shouldn't or whatever, whatever, or people are failing that, you know, you thought should, you know, God knows best. Like he sees the end from the beginning, right? He's the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Like he knows, you know, what will bring, like what Albert was saying, what will bring people closest to him. And, uh, you know, I pray that we would continue to trust in that. Any, any comments on that? We're, we're on the last, uh, the last quote, the last two quotes here, it says, the Lord's merciful kindness is great towards us. He will never leave nor forsake those who trust in him. My brothers and sisters, you who feel that you are entering upon a dark path and like the captives in Babylon must hang your harps upon the willows, let us make trial of cheerful song. You may say, how can I sing with this dark prospect before me, with this burden of sorrow and bereavement upon my soul? When we bring our petitions to the throne of grace, let us not forget to offer also anthems of thanksgiving. The eternal life of our Savior provides us with a constant cause for gratitude and praise. Amen. The eternal life of our Savior provides us with constant cause for gratitude and praise. We want to have fresh in our memory every tear the Lord has wiped from our eyes, every pain he has soothed, and every anxiety removed. Every fear dispelled, every want supplied, every mercy bestowed, and strengthen ourselves for all that is before us through the remainder of our pilgrimage. So I, I like this. You know, every cry that you have given, you know, every sort of uh, pain that you have, anxiety, God sees that and God hears that. He remembers those things. And he wants you to remember that all those things along your pilgrimage, because, you know, like I, like we were saying earlier, we're just sojourners in this world. Like, you, you know what that means? Like a sojourner is just somebody that is passing through, you know, <laughs> we're passing through and we, we will encounter, you know, tears and pain and anxiety and fears, you know, you know, during this, during this sojourning time in this world. But we need to remember that God sees that. You know, he He has entered it into his memory. And I, I love it. Actually, let, let's turn to Revelation. This is the very end of the book. Revelation chapter 21. So this is, my, this is one of my favorite verses. Revelation 21, 1. Revelation 21 1. This is something that you should you should have this in your in your back pocket. <laughs> like a, the, this chapter, because it's the very end of the Bible. Like just like at the end of every book, there's always like the conclusion of the matter. Revelation 21, yep, the second to last chapter. It says in, in 21 1, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And I love this. Well, what does it say in verse 4? And God himself, God, will wipe every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all 
things new. And he said to me, right, for these, for this is true and faithful. Isn't that amazing? Uh, isn't, doesn't that, does that bring you so much hope? You know, we live in a world where there's still a lot of tears. And like I said, anxiety, stress, you know, a lot of sorrow, a lot of destruction in this world, chaos. But God is going to come and he, it's almost as if he comes to every single person and like wipes your, their tears from their eyes, you know, and it, it makes you emotional, you know, and all the all the suffering that has happened in this world is going to pass away. He's making things new, like he's making all things new when he comes again, you know, and when heaven comes down to, to, to this world, the new Jerusalem, you know, we all these things are, are going to be remembered by God, but he's going to remove all those things. And this is why the eternal life of our Savior provides us with constant cause for gratitude and praise. When we go into the sanctuary of God and we see the end thereof, you know, we see that the we see what what Revelation talks about, and we see what happens to the righteous, what we what we see what we see what happens to the wicked. You know, we are finally going to see the end of it all and we're going to live you know um for eternity with god i almost want to say like like what they say in disney like happily ever after you know like in a way that's true you know we're, we're, everything is going to be renewed and, and we're going to uh this is going to be a reality this is going to be reality is, is that amazing is that is that does that give you encouragement and hope um i hope so any questions, any, any last comments? Questions, any last comments? This was a good lesson. Well, you know, like you were saying, you know, I can't forget our trust in you. Amen. You know, trust, I mean, there are some of us already that, you know, they, our, our family, our friend, you know, friends, we all have those that have passed or deceased now. Yeah. Well, they better off than we are, or are we still here? With, so they're actually uh, way ahead. They're actually closer to God. Yeah, that's you right. Know, you did it say that he will he will rise them up. Yeah. Take them first. Yeah, the, we were, we were caught up in, in the air, air with them. That's right. Just like just like you know, uh the, uh, the sheep, you know, who who's their daddy? The, the wolves, right? That's and, right. So they depend on the shepherd. That's true. Trust their shepherd without uh, uh God. Amen, but, amen. You know, he he's not saved. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, what, that's right. That's right. So exactly. Like, I think that's a good way to, uh, anybody else want to say anything about that before we finish our Sabbath school? Any other comments? Yeah, like, I love that. And, and in trusting the shepherd, like trusting in God, you know, he is our shepherd, you know, go ahead, Sam. Yeah. Um, Mm. Mm. Yeah, amen. Any other? Zebo, you have any comments? <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> amen. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to, to trust in the Lord. All right. Let's go. Let's go in and pray, and we'll, we'll go into our in our we'll go into our service. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for um, these reminders, Lord, that you are good and you are love and you are patient, Lord, that we can cry out to you in our emotions and whatever uh, situation in life we are in, whether we're at sea, as my sister said, or whether we're, you know, uh, alone, you know, on this planet, Lord, we know that you are there and uh we can trust you, Lord. I pray that we would continue to build that trust in our relationship with you. Lord, you, you are not an impersonal, far away God, but you actually are very intimate, Lord. And you, we ultimately see that when you came to this world and died on the cross for us, Lord, and coming into humanity's uh, form and, and showing us how to live and, and who you really are. Lord, we thank you so much for, um, 
you know, understanding the, the end from the beginning. Lord, we looked at a revelation. We see that uh, you are going to be coming again and you're going to restore all things, Lord. And I just pray that we would continue to put our hope in you, that we continue to um, remember your promises. Lord, we thank you again for all that you do. Guide us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're just going to take like a, a one-minute break and then we'll, we'll go ahead and start. Good to see you, Emmanuel. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you.
Yes, Albert. I think Albert has got it. I did. So this high is really high. Yeah, yeah. We are living on this reading and they're trying to allow you. I won't keep it down, but where we're at now. Yeah. The ocean, like the ocean. Yeah. 